Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm an Airbus pilot and in today's second tutorial for the Airbus A320 we are going to do the walk around. So we have finished our preliminary cockpit preparation for which both pilots would have been in the cockpit and now we're going to go out for the walk around. Now one thing to do here before we do so is to turn on the nav and logo lights so that we can check that these are actually operating correctly. All right, now with this done, let's go outside. And here we go. So straight down from the jetway, I do realize that it's a little bit louder outside, but I did already turn the um, volume down quite a bit. But uh, well, it is that loud in the real world as well. So usually I'm holding my ears tight when I'm going or just take some ear protections outside anyway. Okay, so we start our walk around up here on the left hand forward fuselage. And on here we check the condition of our AOA probe, that's the one that you find just up here. So make sure that there is no kind of damage or anything on that one. Then we also check the first officers and the captain's static ports up here and make sure that there are no obstructions within the red outline over here. Now, obstructions in this case also means ice. If there is any ice over here, maintenance action will be required to remove it since you can't just spray de-icing fluid on there since that may block the probes. Also, quite important when you're checking static ports is that you have a little look from the side. For example, over here, if you look very closely, you can see a slightly different coloring next to the actual port. And that different coloring comes from maintenance which might put stickers on there when they perform maintenance action or repaint the aircraft. So there might be some stickers and blockers on there which has in the past caused aircraft to crash when the um, static ports didn't work. So be very careful that there is nothing obstructing those um, ports. Now from there we go on to the avionics equipment vent and inlet valve which we can see right over here. Make sure that it is not damaged and that there is um, no signs of any bad conditions. Then we can move forward a little bit. We check the oxygen bay over here, make sure the door is properly closed and check the oxygen discharge valve or the um, oxygen discharge indicators to make sure that they are actually showing us a green color and not anything red or just missing entirely. So. If installed, also check the uh, toilet servicing door that you might have on uh, this location of the aircraft. From there we move forward to the nose section of the plane and in here we got uh, the pitot tubes, then we got the uh, tap probe, that's the one that you see over here, and we also got the icing indicators that we have over here. Now also check the Avionics bay is probably closed and do have a look inside the um, ground electronic connections just to be sure that there is no damage and that there is nothing inside. Okay, so from there we can move on to the nose landing gear after we've had a quick look at the airplane from just the front over here. You can see for example over here how there are so many insects on the nose cone of the plane. Now you want to make entirely sure that there are no remains of birds or dents or anything the plane might have collided with previously. Now from there we move on to the nose wheel and looking at the um, no nose landing gear, first of all we check if there are chocks in place, which there are on uh, this airplane, interestingly enough only at the front. Would have been a philosophy in my airline at least to have them chocked on both sides. Okay. But then we can continue on over here. So we check the condition of the nose wheels and tires. And of course that goes for anything completely around. For any signs of uh, damages. Then we move on to the entire nose gear structure. Taking a look at the structure. Making sure that there are no um, dents or no cracks developing and stuff like that. Then we move on to the taxi takeoff and runway turnoff lights. Which we can find over here. So we've got the... Um, Landing and taxi lights located just up here, and then in the bottom there, you've got the turnoff lights located down here. Make sure that the lights themselves are okay and that there are no damages whatsoever. You also check the hydraulic lines and electrical wires. You do have a quick look into the wheel well down here as well, checking for anything like remains of a bird or also objects that are not supposed to be there. 
Okay, so, and finally you check that the safety pin is removed, but that is what the FCOM says. If we are completely honest, the safety pin may very well already be in place over here, because the um, ground crew might have started to prepare the airplane for pushback already. Alright, then we move on to the right hand forward fuselage, and we start right down here again, so make sure that the uh, pedo probe is looking okay. We look down here at the TAT probe and the um, ice indicators, or the um, icing sensors. We do have a look at the radium and the latches on the side here, especially the latches are important over here. And then of course we got the standby static port. Once again, make sure that it is not obstructed similarly to what we had on the other end side. Now, from here, we also check that the um, We also check that the um, avionic compartment doors are closed and we check that the equipment and air outlet valves are um, in a good condition. Okay then, from there we once again got uh, static ports to check and then we can move on to the um, forward cargo door. Now, on the um, cargo door, as you can see, it's closed right now if it was open you'd also have a little look at all the latches and everything just make sure that um, everything is in order also have a look at all the antennas that we have on the um, plane down here at the lower fuselage making sure that there are no damages anywhere over here now we we'll also move on to the plane below the belly have a little portion at the air inlet over here checking the condition of the anti-collision light over here and then we also check the magnetic fuel level indication to make sure that it is flush with the uh, airframe and not hanging out over there. Okay, so down here you would also find the connection doors for the low and high pressure um, ground airs. So make sure that they are closed properly if not in use. Okay, then we can move on to the center part of the wing over here. Now, first of all, we got the refueling panel, which we ensure is closed unless in operation. We make sure that there is no damages to the extendable landing lights that we have down here. And generally that there are no sort of damages anywhere around the um, lower fuselage. Then moving on along the wing, we check that the leading edges are in a good condition. And getting onto the engines, there is a few things that we need to check over here. So we start on the side, making sure that the oil door is closed and that the... Um, engine itself is generally in a good condition over here. Now, then we have a look at the reverses and make sure that um, the pins are in an appropriate state. So if we do have a look at the um, reverser doors, you can see over here that there are little uh, doors where you would install the um, thrust reverse or lockout pins. Now, if your reverser was inoperative, you would have to see some red pins located over here but luckily that is not the case today so um, we don't see any pins here as well then we move on to the front side of the engine and we check the condition of all the leading edges of the fan blade small things like a little rocks that you might have ingested on a previous landing might all cause damage to the leading edges obviously bird strike is also something that we check for over here where we just make sure that the um where we just make sure that the engine itself is in a good shape and that there are no unknown damages. If there was any damage that you would find over here, then you would check the logbook to see if there is an entry for it already. There would be a little um, chart in the um, technical logbook of the airplane that shows you any known damages. And like that, you could check if something is known already. Also have a look at the acoustic lining that you find on the engine inlet over here, which is the... Um, lining that you see over here make sure that there are no damages by the way damages to this section of the engine is also the primary reason why it is not allowed for flight crew members to sit in the engine for some lovely photos also check the uh, leading edge of the cowling over here to make sure that there is no damage over there so now we continue to the other side again the doors are closed the um, lockout pins are not installed and most importantly we move down to the lower side of the fuselage and check that the latches of the engine cowlings are properly closed. If these are open, you're going to make a spectacular video when you 
take off and rotate the plane and you're going to get some spectacular videos out on YouTube whenever that happens just after your flight lands. Alright, so then we can move on to the actual um, continued wing and over here there are several things we check. Of course we do have a look at the leading edge making sure there have been no bird strikes but if we move up over here you can see that we not only have the refueling panel over here which we make sure is closed but we also have a look down here at um, the magnetic fuel lever make sure that that is properly in place and flush and then we can also have a look at all the uh, drain valves for example over here you've got a water drain valve and you want to make sure that there is nothing leaking out of here so Entirely have a look that there is nothing leaking out of the wing that there is no fuel coming out Have a look that at the general condition of the wing that there has not been any um, bird strike or anything the likes and make sure that the um, air vents for the air, or For the uh, wing tank ventilation system are uh, not obstructed something like birds nesting or insects nesting and stuff like that can always happen on the wings so make sure that um, nothing like this happens now when you get out to the um, edge of the wing, make sure that the navigation lights are actually working. So you've got the uh, nav lights in here, there is two bulbs, and depending on which, depending on the setting of the um, nav and logo light switch that we had in the cockpit, you might find either one of the two working. If you don't see any illuminated, then chances are a bulb is broken and the airplane is dispatchable if you go into the other setting and then the other light bulb works fine. Now on the outside over here you've got the strobe lights and um, as you can see they are slightly deflected outwards so that the cockpit is not being illuminated by an illumination of the uh, strobes. But this is something that becomes more interesting when you've got an airplane that is equipped with sharklets at the, as the chocolate equipped aircraft really had some issues there and the newer chocolate equipped aircraft actually had a strobe light blocker installed that provides um, blockage of the illumination of the uh, cockpit for when the strobe illuminates. Now moving out then to our wingtip fence over here we just make sure that there is no damage and we make sure that all the um, all the um, static wick discharges are in place. Now, if some are missing, you gotta check the minimum equipment last list. You can dispatch with less than the maximum, but a certain minimum amount is required. Over here, then, we've got the aileron, and don't worry if the aileron is hanging down. That is very normal, as the airplane is not pre pressurized on the hydraulic system, and therefore the ailerons and the elevators are uh, hanging down. Completely normal for the A320. Moving along the um, trailing edge of the wing, we check for any damages to the uh, flap fairings or to the flaps themselves. This is where you do find bird strikes every now and then. Okay, so coming along to the uh, main landing gear then. So we do check for any sign of a bird strike, any sign of damage and any leakages over here. And when you have a look at the tires themselves, you also make sure that there are no damages in the tires. What you will also find over here is the um, brake wear indicator pins, but I do believe Phoenix have only modeled them on the front. Or actually, yep, there, there they are. So over here you can see a brake wear indicator pin that is almost used up. So you can see how it just barely sticks out of the uh, metal down here. So that is sufficient for flight only when it really gets flush that is where you start to get limited it is sufficient for the flight but it does show us that that the brake is pretty worn down already likewise on the other hand side you can see over here that there is only a very little bit of a pin sticking out if you had a new brake installed on the plane the pin might stick out all the way until here so that really shows us that we've got a pretty used aircraft over here also on the front you make sure that there are no landing gear pins installed so if the pins were installed over here, you couldn't retract the landing gear. So definitely something that we uh, have a look out for. Okay, so with that, we can say that our main landing gear on this side is looking good. And the shocks are actually in place over here as well. Now, if you're wondering, the thing that you see down here is actually the brake fan. And if the brake fan was operating, 
hold your breath before you go in this area because carbon dust that would be emitted into the air by the brake fan can actually cause cancer. Okay, so also do have a look at the general structures up here in the uh, wheel bay to make sure that there are no general damages located anywhere over here. But this airplane is looking pretty good over here. Okay then, moving on towards the um, aft section of the fuselage. First of all, cargo door, same check as we have on the uh, front cargo door. And then we can move on to here. This is our bulk cargo door, again closed over here. And then coming up here, so we do have our outflow valve located right over here. And that is always going to be open on the ground. If the outflow valve is not open on your outside check, something is wrong. There is a little chance that it might have been closed manually due to cold weather procedures. But if that is the case, go right back inside, make sure that it is open so that you can check its operation. If the outflow valve doesn't work, that airplane is not going to fly anywhere. Okay then, so, having a look a little bit further down, we also check the toilet servicing door, which we can find right over here. And then we also check all the drain masts and make sure that everything is operating. Make sure that you don't have any obstructions over here. And once again, the um, flight recorder access door over there is closed as well. Now, from here, we move on to our stabilizer. And again, over here, make sure that there is no kind of damage to the leading edges and that the static wick dischargers are in place. If the elevator is hanging down a little bit, so remember the entire thing is called stabilizer, only the aft part that we have over here is the actual elevator. If that is hanging down a little bit, that's normal because there is no hydraulic pressure currently applied to the aircraft. Also have a look at the vertical stabilizer, make sure that there are no sign of damages and that the leading edge is clear as well. Now, we also have our aft entry doors over here. Whenever you're walking by one of them, make sure that the um, door access handle is actually in a properly um, closed and latched position. So, for example, it might be slightly open over here. The um, lower part of the handle might not be in place. Stuff like that. Check for all of that to be flush, as otherwise your airplane is going to have more drag than it's uh, really needed. So, coming on to the aft part then, down here is the uh, maintenance access door for the APU and also located over here is the um, tail skid if installed. So, this is the place where the um, lower part of the fuselage would make contact in case of a tail strike, so be very sure that there is no sort of damages located over here. So, then we get to the um, lights on the back again one needs to be illuminated and you also got the strobe light in the middle over there if you do have a look at the uh, rudder over here then you can see that the rudder might also be deflected to either side depending on where the wind comes from as there is no hydraulic pressure applied and the rudder is not mechanically held in place there without hydraulic pressure okay then on the other side of the airplane we're basically going to run the very same checks that we talked about in detail on the right hand side already so make sure that the stabilizer is properly in place and on this little side also have a look at the um, stabilizer indication so you can see how over here we've got the zero position of the stabilizer trim marked on the um, outside of the plane and we also have that little red indicator in the front there let's just move up to have a closer look so that we're able to actually see it in detail so the red indicator over here and the red zero indicator over here, they need to be in the same place. Otherwise, you might have a mechanical problem with your uh, stabilizer. Okay, then, moving forward on the other hand side again, we do check the um, waste system door. Actually, interestingly enough, okay, the waste system is on the right hand side on, on the A320. The uh, portable water is on the left side, so make sure that uh, both are closed and that there are no leakages over there. Now, then we move over to the front again, and basically on this side we run the same checks that we already ran on the other side. So make sure that the general landing gear condition is okay, make sure the tires are okay, no leakages, no ruptured cables. Check for the condition of the brake wear indicator pins, one over here and one over here. And um, check for the general condition of the landing gear, no sign of damages. Landing light in a good condition. And then we can move on towards the um, outside of the uh, trailing edge of the wing. At this point, by the way, also a good idea to have a look into the uh, back of the engine 
for uh, any possible signs of damages, any fuel spillages, anything. And also check the static wick dischargers. Again, moving on the aft side of the wing, we did talk about everything in detail already, so I'm not going to um, go into detail too much. The only thing that's really worth checking is that over here you got the red bulbs. Again, one needs to be working. And on the uh, right side of the plane you got the green bulbs. Okay, engine itself is in a good condition and the um, pins are not installed. The doors are properly latched, including the latches on the lower side. And again, in the front, leading edges are okay. No sign of damages to the um, fan. Now, what is worth mentioning over here is if the fan is windmilling, don't try to reach for it to stop the windmilling motion. If you can't check the leading edges because the fan is windmilling too fast, so be it, nothing you can do about it. If you reach inside there, chances are it's just going to either severely injure you or maybe tear your hand off completely, so don't touch it, really. Okay, so with that, our airplane is now checked on the outside and we can move back in, where in the meantime, while the pilot monitoring has conducted the exterior inspection, the pilot flying would have started the cockpit preparation procedure. So with that, I'd like to thank you very much for watching. Hope that you found this one interesting. And if you did, be sure to let me know in the comments below. Now, as always, if you're up for more, don't forget to subscribe. And if you really love what I'm doing over here, I would appreciate a small donation through the Buy Me A Coffee link in the video description below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all again on the next one.